the market is open on what looks to be a red day throughout the S&P and today we are focusing on PayPal that just reported their earnings before the market opened and is now down around 6%. Now it is very strongly over the last year up around 54% and we do note in fact that it does have a strong buy from Quant and a double buy from Seeking Alpha and Wall Street. So let's jump into their earnings, understand why it is starting to dip and if we should consider this in our portfolio. Now the first thing to note, the headline reads that the majority of the reason for the drop in the shares right now is that they missed their revenue with reporting better than expected Q3 results. Also, for those that don't know, it is the one year anniversary of the new CEO, Alex, and since then the shares are up around 36%. Now, in terms of what the numbers actually reflected, well, EPS up very strongly, 120 versus the expectation from the market of 107. And we do notice, even though it was a miss, it was very small. We're talking about 40 million, 7.85 was what they reported, market wanted 7.89. Now, the increase to their revenue is only around 6% from the same quarter last year. Not the greatest if you consider this a growth stock. And we do also note their net income, 1.01 billion, is marginally lower than the same quarter from last year at 1.02. So is this a company that you would consider that need in your portfolio? We're going to run through in today's episode, dissect and get to our own valuation. We do also note over the last 10 years, this company has been on a bit of a roller coaster where it peaked in 2021 at around $309. We can also see the forward P dusted just below 19. And as we mentioned, analysts are very bullish still on this company. So let's see what they reported in that investor presentation that they released only minutes ago. And we can see their total payment volume up 9%. Revenue, as we mentioned, up 6%. Margins up as well as their earnings per share, which looks very good. And in fact, free cash flow, a metric that we consider to be very important, also up. So earnings per share up double digit, free cash flow up 31%. These are some very strong numbers. But as we can see, the market didn't like the fact not only they didn't beat that top line, but also the growth was very minimal. We're talking mid single digit. Then when we look at their accounts, something when we compare to other companies, they've only grown it on a year on year basis of around 1%. Just today, we analyzed SoFi, which was up in these strong double digits. We can see their monthly active accounts up around 2%. And this is what we're trying to get at with this company. Is the market expecting to see significantly better numbers? Or in fact, is PayPal being unfairly punished? We then look at their numbers throughout, as we can already see, top line up 6%. Their growth in terms of the margins up 8%. And the operating margin, something we always like to look at on this channel, is also up 194 basis points. Now remember, high quality companies, they don't just increase their top line revenue, but they also increase their margin, something that we have seen from PayPal this quarter. And as we already mentioned, earnings per share looking very good, up 22%. Now in terms of their guidance, not something we typically like to see, but for the next quarter, they're also anticipating low single digit growth. Remember, a lot of people do consider PayPal a growth stock, and this isn't what you want to see as a shareholder. Earnings per share as well, they have lowered the guidance. What they were looking before was around a mid single digit increase. Now they're expecting a low to mid single digit increase for the next quarter. Not the greatest. In fact, they're anticipating 103, 107 before they're expecting around 105. So they have widened the gap. In terms of the full year though, when we do look at their margin, they're expecting mid single digit growth. Before this was a low to mid single digit, so nice to see they have actually raised that. And the earnings per share, it looks like they have narrowed that 392 to 396, when prior it was 388 to 398. Now free cash flow margin around 6 billion for the full year, something that we will take a look at when we run it through our valuation model. So you could argue it is fairly mixed in terms of the metrics throughout for this company. But what about the metrics on a historical basis? Well, free cash flow, as always, we want to see increasing over the longer term. We actually see it more than double over the last 10 years. And over the next 12 months, we are expecting massive growth in comparison, which is always great to see. Free cash flow, very important metric. Sales growth, this is one that we do feel a little bit disappointed in. As we can see, up until 2021, we were seeing double digit top line growth. Last two years, we see 22 and 23 coming into the 8% point. So ideally, we want to see them get back up to that double digit rate that we have pretty much come to love with this company. 
question is, is this something they can do? In fact, we have seen those users increase get smaller and smaller, sitting now around the 1% point. However, when you zoom out over the last 10 years, they have more than tripled their top line, 8 billion in 2014 to 30 billion in 2023. And one thing they've also done very, very inconsistently though, is to share buybacks, returning excess cash to your pockets. 1.22 billion in 2014, 1.08 on a trailing 12 month basis. Now, one metric that is very important for us on this channel is the ROIC. We want to see 10% or more just to give us faith management are able to effectively allocate their capital, something they have done pretty consistently and increasing over longer term. So we do quite respect that 15% in 23, 16% on a trailing 12 month basis. And with margins where we do want to see a minimum of 16% with PayPal, that is what we get. Not much in terms of operating efficiency with increase to margins over the longer term, just very stable, very consistent year on year. Free cash flow margin looking very good as well, although it has started to come down from the highs of 2018's 31%. Nice to report though, growth on the trailing 12 month basis at 22% above the 14 from 23. But remember at the bare minimum, we wanna see 5% which PayPal have been achieving. Net debt to EBITDA, earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization. Now this correlates to the balance sheet strength, effectively telling us in 2023 and over the next 12 months, it isn't expected to take more than one day for this company to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. This is what these numbers reflect. So very, very strong. This is what we always love to see. Whatever company we analyze, very strong balance sheets. And we will re-emphasize that when we show you the balance sheet today. Now, we also want to let you know we have released our latest free weekly article. We drop one every single Monday morning to your inbox where we run through what are undervalued companies that we believe deserve your attention as well as what's gone in the market over the last few days. So click on the pinned comment below, sign up, read straight away. You'll also be able to gain access to 36 undervalued stocks for this month, where we also run through the upside of each one that Wall Street believe over the next year. And we also flag those that sit within our own portfolio for those that are interested. And you will for this month be able to grab 22 undervalued dividend stocks that Wall Street themselves believe have the most upside in the S&P right now. So again, click below, sign up, and you can read straight away. In terms of insider ownership, it does sit around 0.14%. We see around 5.2 million worth of sales by the insiders over the last year. Nothing in Q4, nothing in Q3. So you have to go back to Q2 for the latest sale of around 273,000. Now we'll show you for transparency. This was in fact on the 24th of May. So we consider this outdated, but again, information is there if you wanna see, and we don't typically believe insider selling is a bearish signal nonetheless. Institutional ownership, well, 68%, 3.5 billion worth of sales over the last year. We see a little bit more buying over the same time period by institutions, but actually, but in Q3, we see a massive amount more buys in nearly three times, in fact, than the sales. So institutions clearly do like PayPal, especially in the more recent quarter. They are buying into this, into the new CEO, but as always, do your own due diligence, but never copy insiders or institutions. Now, income statement, we've already looked at their top line growth, as we can see, looking very good over the longer term. Question just is around whether or not there is a slowdown in the growth from what we have seen previously. In fact, as we mentioned, it has gone up more than three times from 8 billion to 30 billion. But this part of the analysis, we want to reflect the bottom line net income. Is it a similar story? Are we seeing growth? Now, the answer is yes and no. Over the long term, it has been increasing. But from 2020, it has looked fairly flat. In fact, 2022 wasn't a great year. So even though we do notice massive growth from the 419 million reported in 2014 to the 4.2 billion in 2023, we can see the last four years have remained fairly stable via that drop in 2022. So lots of questions to consider and also something we can factor in to our margin of safety later on in the episode. Now, balance sheet, in terms of cash, it has been increasing over longer term, 2.2 billion in 2014, 13.6 in the latest quarter. So that is good to note. Cash has been increasing, but one number will not give anything away about a company, which is why we do a comparison to their total debt numerically and directionally. And we do notice over the longer term, debt has been increasing around 1 billion in 2014, now sitting around 13 billion in the latest quarter. So as we already mentioned, their debt, in fact, in comparison to their cash, it doesn't look too bad. And net debt's EBITDA showing it won't take PayPal more than one day to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. 
Now, in terms of evaluation grading, they're getting a D. Reason for this, they're trading at a forward P of 19 with the sector at 12.4. Therefore, you're paying a 53% premium for this company over the sector. And that is pretty much shown through the majority of the valuation metrics. Remember to ask yourself, is this company worth a premium? And how much of a premium do you believe it deserves? And hopefully we can ask on some of those questions during the valuation aspect. Then we get to the growth grade where they get a B minus. Now year on year revenue that's up around 9%. Sector median around 4.5, so a little bit better. Moving forward around 8%, again a little bit better in terms of the sector. And the main thing to draw your attention to here is, and similar to the above, it is a little bit better. The earnings per share growth over the next five years, expected 11.6, overall market around 10%. Then we move into the final one, profitability, where they get an A. Gross margin coming in significantly lower at 40% versus the sector 61. Bottom line, 14.3, as we can see, also below the sector median of 22.5. And the one thing that really stands out from this is that cash from operations, 7.31 billion over the last 12 months, much, much better than the sector of 160 million. Now, a quick recap for this part of the analysis, a strong buy from Quant, a double buy from Seeking Alpha and Wall Street, D on valuation, B minus on growth, with an A on profitability. Now, before we do jump into our own valuation model, let's compare their performance against others in the industry. We have some very well-known names here. And over the last year, what we see, PayPal looking very strong, up 52%. But in fact, out of all of these companies, it is one of the worst other than GPN, global payments down 2% which shows us the industry as a whole has seen a lot of strength. Then over the last five years, when we zoom out, we can see it is towards the lower end, negative 26%. As we said, it has fallen massively from the highs of $305 a few years ago. And over the last 10 years, not the greatest in all honesty at 125%, but also not the worst. But do remember the past performance, whether you believe this to be good or not, has no indication on the future. We also want to reflect, and I'm sure you know the answer, the comparison versus the S&P. Whilst over the last year, PayPal has outperformed. When we look over the last five years, as we can see, and over the last 10 years, PayPal has underperformed quite significantly. Question is, do you believe it will be able to outperform over the future? Or do you think a low cost ETF could be a better solution? Now let's jump into the intrinsic value. As always, if you do enjoy the content, value is being provided. Smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. Now our intrinsic value of $104, run it through the DCF model, which is where we got to that value today. So we've got the free cash flow year on year. As they said, they expect around 6 billion in 2024 for the full year. Now forward looking, we've gone for 2%, much lower than the average growth of 20%. With the discount rate, we get the present value of future free cash flow and terminal value. Add together with the cash, subtract total debt, get to the equity value, divide by the shares outstanding, and we have the $104, which indicates 33% upside. Now remember, these numbers are subjective, and you can grab a copy of this model by clicking on the pinned comment below, running your own numbers through PayPal or any other company. But for transparency, we will show you the other rates at 4%, giving us an intrinsic value of 117, upside of 15%. At 6%, we can see here $133, giving us upside of 70%. Now, as we said, we'll take the lower rate of 2%, giving us our intrinsic value of $104. With the current price around 78, we will use a 10% MOS to start, and we execute on that if it meets the three golden criteria. Wide moat, strong financial metrics, good forward-looking data. If you believe that, we'll buy at $93 today, then we keep going till it's near the current trading price. And in today's episode, pretty much trading at a 25% MOS, with Wall Street giving them a price target of $95 upside of 22%. As always though, do give us your thoughts. Is this one that is sufficient with a 25% MOS at 30% a buy at 73 and for those that want to see at 35 $67. So 25% MOS, do bear in mind the top line does seem to be slowing down. Active accounts maybe not growing as fast as the market wanted and they did have a miss, although it was marginal, a miss on the top line nonetheless as always give us your thoughts in the comments below are you buying holding or selling paypal if you enjoyed today's episode smash that like button hit that subscribe and bell button so you are notified of these videos as they drop don't forget to sign up to the free weekly newsletter below and join us in the patreon where we do talk about our weekly buys and sells as always have a great day and we'll see you all on the next one